In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the vertex and the axis of symmetry for an absolute value function. So first, we're going to set the inside part equal to 0. And we'll solve for x. We'll get, if you add 2 to both sides, you get x is equal to 2. So this is the axis of symmetry. And it's also the x-coordinate of the vertex. To find the y-coordinate of the vertex, you need to take this number, plug it back into the formula, which when you do that, you're just going to get the number outside of it, which is 3. So that's how you could find the vertex and the axis of symmetry for an absolute value function. Now, if you were to draw a graph, or at least a rough sketch, it would look something like this. So the vertex is at 2 comma 3. And because we have a positive sign in front of the absolute value function, the graph is going to open upward. So it's going to look like this. And the axis of symmetry is this line, x equals 2. As you can see, the right side is a reflection of the left side at the axis of symmetry. And the vertex is this point. It's 2 comma 3. So that's how you could see it graphically. Now let's work on another example. Go ahead and try this one. So we have 4 minus the absolute value of x minus 3. Go ahead and find the axis of symmetry and the vertex. So if we set the inside part of the absolute value function equal to 0, we'll get x is equal to 3. So that is the axis of symmetry. And it's also the x coordinate of the vertex. And if we plug that in to get y, this is going to be 4 minus 0, which is 4. We'll get the vertex, the y coordinate of the vertex. And of course, we can graph it as well. So the vertex is at 3 comma 4, which is right here. Now because we have a negative sign in front of the absolute value function, this graph is going to open downward. So it's going to have that general shape. And here is the vertex. And the axis of symmetry is the line x equals 3. So that's how you could find the vertex and the axis of symmetry for an absolute value function. Now let's try a different example. So consider this particular absolute value function. Find the vertex and the axis of symmetry. So what we need to do is set the inside part of the absolute value function equal to 0. So first I'm going to add 7 to both sides. I'm going to get 3x is equal to 7. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So for the axis of symmetry, x is just going to be 7 over 3. For the vertex, the x coordinate will be the same, 7 over 3. And if you plug in 7 over 3 into x, this is going to be 0 because we set it equal to 0 and got that point. And then 0 plus 4, this will just give us a y coordinate of 4. So that's all you need to do whenever you want to find the vertex 
and the axis of symmetry. By the way, for those of you who prefer to work with a general equation, here's what you could use. So let's say we have an absolute value function at this point. Let's say this is k and this is h. The axis of symmetry is going to be x equals h and the vertex, as you could see, it's at h comma k. And this works if you have this generic equation. So if you have an absolute value function in the form of a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k, then your vertex will just be h comma k. So for an example, let's say if we have the absolute value function 2 x minus 5 plus 3. The vertex will simply be 5 comma 3 and the axis of symmetry is just x equals h, which in this case h is 5. So those are some notes that you may want to add to your notebook for those of you who are studying this topic. By the way, for those of you who want access to more video related content, feel free to check out the links in the description. If you click on this more button, you're going to see other videos relating to the video that you're currently watching. And these links are separated by chapter. And of course, you could check out my website, video-tutor.net, where you'll get access to my video playlists, final exam videos, and also test prep videos. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance.